And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Get ready to making some quilts. Oh yeah, we're going to be putting some thread through the needle. We're going to be getting ready to sew all these different buttons onto our quilts. We're looking at Patchwork. This is a two-player abstract strategy game by Uwe Rosenberg, who you know maybe have designed Agricola and Caverna and some other games like that. Uh, it's two players. It says it takes 30 minutes, but I think it takes less. Ages eight and up. Um, let's take a look. It's a sort of tetris like game that has an economic engine to it. Let's take a look. In Patchwork, it's a two-player game. You're trying to get as many buttons as possible and have no spaces left on your board. You want them all covered. At the beginning of the game, there's a bunch of these different Tetris-looking pieces of quilts that are put into randomly into a big circle around the board. And this pawn will be right next to the smallest little one here, which is this one right here. And so on your turn, you could do one of two things. One is you can buy any one of the three pieces clockwise from the pawn. So I could buy this one, this one, or this one. This one costs me one button. Now you start the game with five of these buttons. So if I bought this one, I would pay one button to the bank. I would take this and I would place it somewhere on my board. Maybe like this. And I also, see it has a two hourglass, it also makes me move up two times on the board, the main board. So on the green player and I would go one, two. Now this is an interesting thing with the time track is, uh, whoever's in last place gets to go again. So let's say my guy was up here, let's say I had bought one that moved me one, two, three, four. Now if the yellow player goes and they bought one that only moved them two, one, two, well they still get to go again. Maybe they buy another one that's two, one, two. Even if they're on top, they get to go again. Similar to like the Thebes time track, if you've ever been familiar with that game. And so whoever's turn it is is going to depend on whoever's behind each other. Now whenever you take a piece, you put the pawn in that spot. For example, if the, if the other player bought this piece, they'd put the pawn here, and then the next player can buy any one of these next three. So you're constantly moving all the way around, getting different options to buy each turn. Say on my next turn, I bought this one. It's free. It doesn't cost me any buttons, but it cost me three on the time track. And notice this one has a button on it. So I would move up three, one, two, three. Anytime you pass one of the buttons on the board, you get that many buttons that are on your board. So in this case, I would get one button. Now the second thing you can do instead of buying is you can move in front of the other player and get one button for each position that you moved. So if this player was here, he could go one, two, three, four, five, six. He would get six buttons, plus since he crossed a button, he would get as many buttons that's on his board as well. That's a way to not buy anything but get a lot of uh, sort of that, that currency of buttons in this game because essentially it really is just dollar bills here we're talking about buttons as currency. Now the good news is you got a lot of buttons but the bad news is you've just spent a lot of time and you put nothing on your board. At any time if you're the first player to cross one of these little pieces here you get to pick it up and put it on your board. So this would be my board later on and I have this one piece and I could fill in this little hole like that with it. Naturally, as the game goes on, uh, there'll be less and less pieces as, again, everyone, as they take a piece, they replace it with the pawn and you keep going around and the pieces will become less. If at any time, the first player that finishes a 7x7 seven seven grid, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, if you have this, any 7x7 seven seven grid uh, uh, finished, they get to take this 7x7. Seven seven. At the end of the game, this is worth 7 buttons or 7 points at the end of the game. Because even though this is currency and you're using it to buy, uh, these pieces. It's also basically points. The game ends when s both players make it all the way to the middle and, and it has a little button there at the end so you're going to get a lot of buttons at the very end as well that you'll use as part of your scoring. Also note that this board flips over. It's the same scoring board but instead of going in a circle it goes sort of uh, in, a, in a maze fashion there. Uh, and so once both players have gotten to the middle the game ends and we do final scoring. So let's say at the end of the game I had 18 total buttons. You're then going to subtract from those 18 buttons two points for every empty space in your board that you did not fill. So I have one, two, three, four. So that's eight. It's because it's two for each space. So it's my 18 buttons minus eight. My final score is 10. 
Now, uh, the first couple times you play this game, it's quite possible that you get a pretty negative score or lots of negative scores. Uh, and a very, and one of the, you know, 30 is considered a super high score. So, uh, you know, points are typically in the, you know, 10 to 20 range if you had a pretty good game and in the minus points if you didn't have such a good game. And, and then uh, basically whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, there is Patchwork. Uh, it, weird, this is like the second game in the last year I've played that is about quilts. <laughs> uh, there was Quilt Show from Rio Grande Games that I, I liked, uh, that I reviewed last year. Uh, now this game, I'm not usually a big fan of abstract games. Um, and in fact, this actually just won the 2014 Golden Geek Award for abstract games. So this is the winner of that award. So, and, and I don't typically like abstracty designs, uh, but I do like two player games that play in 30 minutes or less very much and I was really impressed with this game. Um, it didn't feel as abstract because what you're putting together are those Tetris pieces, and as a kid I played Tetris for a ridiculous amount of hours. So I really liked the spatial aspect of putting those Tetris pieces together, looking forward as to which pieces are still available, which ones might be able to fit in there later, uh, looking forward to those things. What I really liked even more than that, actually, was the economic aspect of this, because I really do like economic games. And this is really interesting because you've got those buttons that essentially is currency. It's, it's, it's an economy of its own in the game, but then you have the other economy of time, and you're constantly trying to balance your buttons, which are basically money and points at the end, versus time. And you're looking at the pieces and you're going, geez, if I get some more buttons on my board, next time I pass these buttons, it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna keep getting more of these and kind of build up this economic engine. So do you go after all the big buttons ones that you can afford and then get in those, get in those? Or do you just go after the ones that take the least amount of time that maybe don't have a lot of buttons, but you can fill your board? It's really balanced well. I was very impressed with this because it's one of those games that you can plop down in front of somebody and explain it in five minutes or less, and you can play it simply without a lot of rule questions, and you get to the end, like the first couple of times you play this game, don't be afraid, you're probably gonna get minus points. That's pretty normal for your first few plays. Uh, but after you get some t the plays under your belt, you know, I got, I think my highest score is 28, which from what I've read in the, in the, on the forums is actually a pretty good score. Up in the, you know, 30 is supposed to be really good. Um, but even now and then, I still have a game where I get minus points. So it's like, I've played a whole lot of games of this, and I still don't know exactly what to do when, and that fascinates me because I'm still trying to figure out the balance. Uh, do you go all buttons? Do you go no buttons? Do you do a balance of a few? Do you do buttons early so that they can compound and get you more and more over the game? Simple game, but lots of decisions to make. When do I buy? Should I buy this now or should I just go ahead in front of my opponent and take some buttons and make him buy something? Because I want something that's four pieces away and I know he can't buy it now. And if he buys something, that's going to allow me to buy it. What am I leaving them? What am I you know, looking forward a few turns and seeing what pieces are there that I might really want? And based upon that, what am I going to do now? Well, shoot, that one needs 10 buttons to buy it. I don't have 10 buttons, but I've got five buttons. Oh, and I'm going to pass a button before I get there. And I'll have more if I get this one, then maybe I'll have 10 when I get to that piece. And there's, there is some forward thinking. It's a lot more depth than you would originally think when you just lay out this game and you explain the rules. And I like that about this. Simple rules, easy to teach, easy to play, but there's depth and a lot of replayability value because the random setup I found, man, every time you play the game, it does feel differently because the different pieces come up in different waves. Uh, wow, I really like this game and there's a reason why it won that Golden Geek Abstract of the Year. I think it's sold out pretty much everywhere right now and I just want to go look at it and see how much it was and stuff. I think it's around like 23 bucks online, totally worth it. Uh, this is from Mayfair Games in the US, originally came out from Lookout Games overseas. One to definitely check out if you like two player, two player games that have the spatial element but have the economic engine. Uh, we're talking about patchwork. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <coughs>